that almost every person goes through in life. And so we're going to look at these one at a time over the next two or three weeks. So let's start in stage number one, all right? David lived the first years of his life in his father Jesse's house in Bethlehem, all right? And the scripture doesn't give us a whole lot of detail about what those years were like, doesn't give us much information, but it gives us just enough information that we can draw some incredibly powerful conclusions. And the conclusion that I draw was that David was faithful in natural things during that period of time. You see, Saul had been anointed king. By outward appearance, Saul was everything a king ought to be. He was a head taller than everybody else. He was handsome, and it looked like he had great leadership potential. But Saul displeased the Lord by being disobedient to God, and God rejected him as king. And so in 1 Samuel 16, something interesting happened. God Samuel the prophet to go and anoint a new king over Israel and God doesn't tell Samuel who the name of the new king just that it will be one of the sons of Jesse in Bethlehem and so Saul grabs his horn of oil and he goes to Jesse's house to anoint the new king and he comes to Bethlehem and 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 they uh, they're offering sacrifices to the to the Lord there and as they were arriving Samuel sees Jesse's uh, oldest son, David's eldest brother, uh, his name was Eliab, and he thinks, wow, this surely must be the Lord's anointed one, because he was so handsome and tall in height and very masculine in, in appearance, but the Lord said something powerful to Samuel that day. He said, do not consider his appearance or his height, because the Lord doesn't look on the things that men look at. Just tell your neighbor, God isn't looking at the things that men look at. Amen? You say, well, what does the Lord look at? Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so they begin to line up Jesse's son, and Eliab comes in front, and he's not the one. And, and, then, and then Abinadab comes, and he's not the one. And Shammah comes, and he's not the one until all seven have passed before the front of the prophet. And Samuel says, the Lord hasn't chosen any of these. You know, are these all of your sons? And Jesse says, you know, there's still one, and his name is David. He's out tending the sheep. So they send for him to come in, and he comes in before the Lord. And the scripture says that he's ruddy. I'm not really sure what that means. Maybe has a few pimples on his face or something. I don't know. He, he probably wasn't the handsomest kid in the world, but he'd been out there among the sheep, probably smelled like sheep. But, but, but the Lord said, this is the one. And, of course, Samuel took his horn of oil and anointed David to be king king over Israel. Now here's the most important question of this day, all right? How many of you are still with me? I'm laying a lot of groundwork today, all right. Here's the thing. What did God see in David that would cause him to be chosen? What set him apart from all of his brothers? What was it? We know it wasn't about his appearance, you know. God looked at his heart, and, and I believe that what it was that caused, caused uh, David's uh, attention, God's attention to be drawn to David, was that David had a faithful heart. David had a faithful heart. Let me tell you something. God is looking for people in this generation who have a faithful heart. He never changes. The ways of the Lord are the same. God says, I do not change. I am the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's looking for faithful people. Do I got any people in the house who say, you know, Pastor, I'm going to be a faithful person to the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm going to show you that David was faithful in Bethlehem in three areas. Let me just touch on them real quickly today. First of all, he was faithful in tending the sheep. Tending the sheep. He took his job seriously. Uh, which, by the way, that was... Uh, considered to be kind of a menial job in that day. I mean, obviously the youngest brother was out tending the sheep, right? Uh, but David took it way serious. In fact, David's testimony later on was this. In 1 Samuel 17, this is what he said. He said, when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep 
from his mouth. Now, how many of you know sh shepherding sheep was probably not the most dangerous job in the world? It was obviously it was a menial task given to the youngest son. David was even teased about it. Did you know that? King David was teased about being a shepherd boy, right? When he went to bring his brother's food, you know, and Goliath is challenging them, and, and uh, David winds up bringing food to his older brothers. Uh, the, one of his, old, his older brothers told him this. He said, with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? And so David was teased about the, men, the menial job that he had as the widow shepherd boy with the widow sheep. You can see the brother doing that, right? But you see, David didn't look at his heart, had his job like that. He, David instead said, while I'm out here watching these sheep, I'm going to do something really productive. And he had what a lot of boys in those days had. He had a sling, right? And so David would practice with that sling. It wasn't this kind of slingshot, all right, like we have today with a rubber band on it. It was a kind of sling that you twirl and you put a rock in there and you let it go. Well, he practiced over and over and over again until he got really, really good with it. He was faithful in natural things and finally the day came when a bear came and a lion came and he took that slingshot and he went after them and he defended his father's sheep where other shepherds may have run uh, David ran after them and defeated the bear and the lion and you know anybody would have understood if David would have came to the house and said you know hey dad the, you know a bear got your sheep and I ran to save my life I barely escaped how many I ran too come on Amen. But David didn't. He ran after them because David said, I'm going to do my best in the job that I have been given. Now, here's the point. How many of you are ready for the point today? All right. God was looking for someone to shepherd his people, Israel. And God could look into that heart of David and know this. If he is faithful to defend the sheep as a boy, then he's going to be faithful to defend my nation and my people as a man when he's king. Come on. David was faithful to care for the sheep, so God knew he's going to be faithful to care for God's flock. David was faithful in natural things. That's why God could entrust him with influence later on in his life. And then the second thing David was faithful at was playing the harp. I don't play the harp, never have played the harp. I played a little enough, I played enough instruments just to know that you don't get really good without doing what? You got to be faithful to what? Practice. We have phenomenal musicians in this church. Come on, let's give our musicians a great big hand. Come on. But I'll have you know, they didn't just come up here yesterday and decide, you know what, I think I'll, think I'll play the guitar and the keyboard and the drums. And we'll see how that goes. No, no, they've been practicing. They've been working at it. And you see, where some may have toyed with playing the harp, not David. David was a musician who would become the psalmist of Israel. David was determined to be the best. He was the kind of a person that in his heart said, I'm not just going to master this thing. I'm going to learn how to worship God with this harp. I'm going to learn how to let the anointing of the Spirit flow through me. And so the day came then when Saul was rejected by the Lord. You may remember the story, right? And he was being tormented by an evil spirit. And someone told him, they said, listen, man, you need someone to bring some music in here. And so second, 1 Samuel 16, 17, Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays the harp and bring him to me. And they found David. And David, they brought David in before Saul. And he began to play that harp. But let me tell you, it wasn't just the technique that he had. Although I'm sure his technique was amazing. It was the heart that he had towards God. And God began to flow through that music. And that anointing began to flow through it. And you see, but it all happened because David was faithful in small little natural things like saying, I want to learn these scales. I want to learn how to play this harp. I just believe that God works through natural things. And then he was faithful in obeying his father. God's Word just gives us little pieces of David's life during this time. And remember that David had been anointed king over Israel, right? And the Spirit of the Lord had came on David from that time forward. And, 
and, and, and David is now, sometimes he's in the service of Saul playing the harp, and other times still as a young man in his father's household, he's, he has those responsibilities, and, and one day his dad calls him and gives him a job to do, and, and, and now remember, this is dad now telling the next king what he should do, okay, and, 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 and because he was anointed, but David was faithful to obey his dad. And this is what Jesse told him, 1 Samuel 17. Jesse said to his son, take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Notice what David did. Early in the morning, David left the flock with a shepherd, left the flock with the shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. How many of you are with me? You see the faithful heart of David right there, right? He didn't argue. He didn't tell his dad, you know, I've been anointed to be the king of Israel. And who do you think you are telling me, telling me what I'm supposed to do? I've got other things to do. I go and I play this. I play the, you know, from time to time. What if Saul wants me to come and play the harp for him? He, he, you see none of that. You see that, that, that David was simply doing what he needed to do, obedience to his father. And, and let me tell you something. God was looking for a heart like that because God knew here is a young man who obeys his father he respects authority he does what is told it was a heart that was faithful and God was thinking if I could use a someone like that and I'll tell you the interesting part of this whole story was that because of his faithfulness and obeying his father going to bring this food to his brothers who were at the battle that's when he heard Goliath that's when he saw Goliath that's when he learned about Goliath threatening the people of God and cursing God and that's when he went out there and defeated Goliath and it wasn't long because of his obedience because of his faithfulness how many of you are with me that they were chanting in the street Saul has killed his thousands but David has killed his tens of thousands I'm just here today to tell you that God is looking for people in this day and hour to be faithful in the natural things of life you say, well, what does all this have to do with me? I've got some truths for you to ponder. You still with me today? 